Hi, I'm Michael Branwine. I'm an attorney at the Gordon Law Group, and today I'm going to be discussing when to switch from an LLC to an S-Corp for tax benefits. I encourage you to watch this entire video because during the course of this video, I'm going to break down a lot of information, and I think this information will help you. So it behooves you to stay for the entire video. You might just learn something. Switching from an LLC to an S-Corp isn't like just flipping on a light switch. It could be a little bit more complicated than that. So I'm going to be discussing with you when to do it and the tax implications thereof. At a federal level, a sole proprietorship is basically taxed the same way you'd be taxed. An LLC absent a tax election owned by one person is taxed the same way. An LLC with multiple owners by default is taxed as a partnership. All three entities are essentially taxed at the individual level. So it's very important to understand whether it's a sole proprietor, single member LLC, or LLC taxed as a partnership, you're the one paying the tax at the end of the day to the IRS. Understand that the reason why you would form an LLC is generally for protection. It's not for tax benefits. You have to understand that an LLC when formed is really no different than having no LLC absent an election. So remember, LLC, limited liability company, is supposed to shield you, the owner, from liabilities generated by the business. But it doesn't necessarily improve your taxation. So what's a drawback to just having an LLC? Well, if you work for a company and you're a W-2 employee, you pay a portion of employment tax, the company pays a portion of employment tax, which of course comprises Social Security and Medicare tax. If you just have an LLC, you're subject to self-employment tax. Essentially, you, the taxpayer, now assume the burden of employment taxes. Remember, there is no employer, so you're essentially going to lose more of your net income because you're subject to self-employment tax. Now I'm going to discuss with you a way to mitigate one of the big drawbacks of an LLC self-employment tax. It's called an S-Corp. An S-Corporation is essentially a vehicle, much like a partnership, that passes through net income to you, the taxpayer. The difference is the net income of the business is not subject to self-employment tax, unlike a partnership. There is one potential drawback of having an S-Corp, which is that you, the owner, assume you're active in the business, have to draw a reasonable wage. This essentially means that you're going to pay employment taxes on your portion of wages, just like your S-Corp will. However, generally speaking, if you have an S-Corp versus just an LLC, you're still going to come out ahead because the remaining income that passes through to you, the owner, is not subject to self-employment tax. So again, an S-Corp income to you, not subject to self-employment tax, but you're probably going to have to run a reasonable wage if you have net income under the business. So let's use some real examples. Let's say my S-Corp made $100,000 net income and I've decided to wage myself $30,000. That means my real net income is $70,000. In an LLC, I could be taxed on all $70,000 or I could even be taxed on all $100,000 because there's no wages. In the S-Corp though, the $70,000 net income passes through to me and that won't be subject to self-employment tax. Okay, so this all sounds great, but how do you actually elect to be taxed as an S-Corp? Remember, by default, an LLC is not an S-Corp, and even a corporation is not an S-Corp. You make the election on Form 2553 with the IRS. 2553. On this form, you're going to list some very relevant information. The business name, business address, the EIN. You're going to have to list your name, your address, social security number, when you acquired your interest in the business, and when you want the S-Corp election to start. Basically, what is the effective date that this LLC is going to be treated as an S-Corp? Now, remember something, only an entity can make an S-Corp election. An LLC can be treated as an S-Corp. A corporation can be treated as an S-Corp. You as a sole proprietor cannot. So you need a legal entity, like an LLC, for example. Now that you've decided to treat your company as an S-Corp, let's understand what that means from a tax filing perspective. If you were nothing, a sole proprietor, or a single member LLC with one owner, you would not file a tax return for the business. You would report the business's information on your tax return. If you had an LLC with multiple owners by default, you would file a partnership tax return, Form 1065. If you had a corporation, you would file a Form 1120. 
understand that an S-Corp files Form 1120-S. So there is a form that an S-Corp has to file. 1120-S, very different than you reporting information from your sole proprietorship or your single member LLC on your personal tax return. So if you're thinking about making the switch from an LLC to an LLC taxed as an S-Corp, understand that you can have significant tax savings on self-employment tax. While it's true that you have to draw a reasonable wage as an owner who actively participates in an S-Corp, it's been entirely possible, if not quite likely, that the savings in self-employment tax will yield you at least some benefit, if not a significant benefit. So we talked about the fact that an owner has to draw a reasonable salary from the S-Corp. Remember, the S-Corp is a distinct legal entity from the owner. You're gonna be an employee of your company and you have to draw a reasonable wage. I wish I could tell you what a reasonable wage is, but it's actually not defined anywhere in the Internal Revenue Code. But if you're making income, especially substantial income, rest assured the IRS is going to require you to draw some sort of salary. Typically speaking, the IRS can scrutinize unreasonably low salaries to prevent abuse of the system. For instance, if your business made $20 million and you paid yourself a $5 salary the whole year, the IRS may question that. Okay, this is all well and good, but when do you make the S-Corp election? You should really be thinking about making the S-Corp election when your business is doing well and you have substantial net income. I know that's somewhat subjective, but generally speaking, the old rule of thumb is that if you are making $100,000 a year or more, it might be beneficial to make the S-Corp election. Of course, there are new administrative costs, for instance, payroll and filing a separate tax return. So perhaps those numbers aren't uniform for everyone. Maybe $200,000 or $250,000 of net income is when you should make the switch. The important thing is talk to a tax professional. They can help you understand your tax savings and when it is the right time to make that S-Corp election. Don't already have a tax professional? Don't have one off the top of your head? Can't think of one? Well, why don't you contact the Gordon Law Group? We're tax professionals and we can help. I encourage all of you to scrutinize and analyze your financials so you can understand how your business is doing and if it really makes sense to make the S-Corp election. Again, understand that if you make an S-Corp election, you're going to have to file an 1120S for the business. You're also going to have to run payroll because you need to pay yourself a reasonable wage. So there are tax return filing fees, you're going to have some payroll fees, and if you were a sole proprietor before and now you're forming a company, you're gonna have filing fees with respect to the business, initial, and likely on an ongoing basis. Look, there is no magical threshold of when it makes sense to make the S-Corp election, but if your income is not that high, filing an S-Corp return, paying fees to incorporate some sort of business, and having to pay for payroll may make making the election not worth it. So think about it, scrutinize your business. I'm Michael, make sure that you check out all of the other videos on our channel. We have a lot of videos that are designed to help you and your business. And as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment.